Hey, I'm Christopher Gadet, and this is my 2008 GMC Savannah that I have converted into my cozy home. So come on in here. We got my trusty coat hanger here. It's pretty cool. It's like a brass deer. Um, hang up all the coats and everything. And then I did a burlap coffee sack pretty much over any section of the van that is tin where you could see it. Um, and this worked really well as well just because there's like a vapor barrier bag sealed off with fiberglass and bat insulation just to help with the mold. Um, so essentially the doors are fully insulated and the rest of the van is completely insulated as well. So throughout the whole van from the front to the back, it's actually all um, interlocking hardwood just because it's durable and that way I could just lay down insulation, put the floor over and it's pretty easy to sweep and clean and all that. It does get a little bit cold sometimes, so I got the fuzzy shag carpet, just because it feels so nice on the feet. And then I carry most of my food um, in these drawers and throughout the cooler as well. Basic stuff as well, just like you got all your supplements and things like that. I use a quick plate a lot of the time, teas, things like that nature. And I have one bin down here just for all my electronics just because this bin slides around a lot less, so it's good to keep that in there. Um, this table is very easy as well. It's just kind of like toothbrush, things like that, cleaning supplies, the tiny stuff. I don't have a refrigerator or anything that you could plug in, but I do have a Stanley um, cooler that's, I think, 40 liters, um, just because I'm one person, so it's easier that way to not have a huge, huge cooler or fridge. Um, and that'll keep ice cold for four days, so the only annoying thing is that you gotta buy ice all the time or like um, have ice packs and stuff. Luckily, I have generous friends who let me freeze their, <laughs> freeze my stuff in their uh, freezers. And basically with this van, what I really, really wanted was like a super cozy bed. So I didn't skimp on the bed because I am like 6'1". Um, and so essentially I just took with a high density memory foam and a firm memory foam and kind of sewed it up into a bag to make a mattress um, that would fit tailored to this exact size. Um, so that's pretty cool and then I do have a lot of storage underneath. So I keep my clothes in two bins. I do one bin of t-shirts, underwear, stuff like that. One bin of shorts, pants. Um, and then I store my towels behind that. And under here I have a full bin of just sweaters things of that nature, coats, what have you. And um, yeah, because the bed's built pretty high off the ground as well, I was able to get a lot of storage um, underneath the bed, just on these like hinge base systems. Um, so because the wheel well sits off, sticks out a lot, just pretty much build um, a separated area from there on back. And this way I can store all my camping gear um, I do have a snowboard with snowboard boots and bindings and um, yeah, I could show you the back of the van as well. It's a little rustier than all the cars out here in Victoria because the Ontario winters. But yeah, very basic curtain just on a hemp string. Um, just makes it easy to kind of plop that over. So here I have all my climbing gear. Um, I have Reflectix that I've not needed to cut out for the windows yet because the temperature has been pretty pretty reasonable. Um, but it's cool. I could store my bike under here. I just got to kind of rig it properly. I got my skateboard as well. What do you do for power and lighting? Um, so essentially I have very easy battery powered um, LED Christmas lights all around just up here which work really well. Um, in fact sometimes those are too bright so a lot of times I just use a candle just because I do rather the like natural light versus blue light. Um, as well with, <laughs> it's like a boat horn. But yeah, I do use a candle a lot in the little lanterns just because they do help with burning up moisture as well if you're two people or if it's a little bit cooler. Um, so it kind of burns that moisture, it gives you a natural light. Um, aside from that, I do have a, you can see it on the dash over there. It's actually a power bank like a battery pack and super bright light that Black Diamond makes. Um, so right now it's charging off the solar panel and then I plug that into say my iPad, my phone, anything like that. And then when I'm charging like my camera or even I have like a computer stereo system I've wired to my car um, and I just plug it into the 12 volt inverter and then it runs off the car battery. Um, so because I drive enough, I use it for my commuter to work. The battery's kind of always hot and going. Um, 
so I've never had any problems with the battery dying or anything like that while running off of it. So I wanted this van to be at least versatile enough to keep its temperature um, whenever I'm in colder places. Like recently enough, I was in Utah. And during the day, it would heat up quite a lot. Um, so it would get very cold the second the sun came down. Um, and so essentially, I wanted to insulate it, insulate it the best that I can all around and seal it just so that when it is really hot I can keep it cool and when it is really cold I can keep it kind of warm. Um, so I did um, half inch polystrain times like three of R3 insulation. So it's about R9 which fit really well with the ribbing before I put the walls on all around minus the floor because the floor it's not terribly um, important to have super insulated. Um, and then yeah, I did bad insulation and fiberglass insulation all throughout the bigger cavities of the van. And then just made sure to seal them with that vapor barrier plastic that you can get and then tuck tape. Um, because as well, back home, I'm from um, Ontario originally and so it gets quite cold in Ottawa. It was like minus 30 all the time. But it was a cool experiment because I'd also run a tiny, it's called a Mr. Buddy I think, it's a vintage one. Um, but it's very small, one of the smallest ones I've seen. And it heats up the entire van quite well, so I um, thought that was important rather than always having drafts or always having it being like steaming hot, you know? So a lot of people, they'll pick these cargo vans because they want to be able to park anywhere in the cities and just kind of blend in. Um, stealth kind of van life, mm -hmm. a lot of people refer to it as. Was that a concern of yours when getting something like this? Oh yeah, 100%. Yeah, um, so I don't have a roof rack, I don't have a bike rack. Um, the outside of the van seems pretty pretty inconspicuous but I did add two stickers on the side my friend made me these pretty cool decals my buddy who has a company called machete premium cuts and um, that was partially just because like this van kind of having that transition of lifestyle and leaning more in the direction of trying to do adventure stuff that kind of like decal makes me reminded of that I suppose like the mountains and the river and the tent and and consequently when you are in a van you probably will spend more time outside because naturally you're in places where it's beautiful outside right um, it's less easy to get sucked into that kind of slower pace maybe that puttering around a place could have but um, funny enough those stickers make people think I'm in like a business van so people always go like who do you work for did you make that and it's been striking up really interesting conversations um, there's a little spaceship on it as well, so people always ask me about like aliens, and sometimes I've had some pretty alien conversations. Um, but no, the inconspicuity of everything was like very important because you don't want to get hassled when you got the big pop up and an awning. But as well, I just didn't feel like I needed all those bells and whistles, and um, I knew these vans pretty well because I worked for FedEx as well for a while. So I'd picture myself like without all the packages loaded up in the van, like what could I make do with this, you know? Yeah. Why was van life right for you? Um, I think it was right for me just with how everything aligned at the time. I think timing could have a big, big, um, big play in that. But my life was aligning where when I wasn't at work, I was outside or I was climbing and I was camping. I was doing these things anyway. And then when I saw how expensive rent was when I was paying it alone at one point, combined with the amount of kind of traveling and moving around I wanted to do, I realized like, I wasn't really downsizing anything, it was just streamlining, like living more deliberately. Um, so yeah, I think the mobility of it and also just pushing yourself to kind of like just creating this van, I didn't know if I could do it. So that in its own was like this crazy learning process. I think my big mission with it was to connect more to the things that matter, which is like keeping your body right, you know, so you can make sure to keep your mind right and being in places where you're inspired. and. Um, I have found like it's easy to get addicted to that pace as well of you know being able to start your car and just cruise out and then open your doors with all the things you love whether you want to go for a bike ride whether you want to read a book for an hour whether you want to make a huge meal and it's a bit of a trip like after six months now it's been I still kind of laugh like a madman some days like what? as if this is like this is what this is my main attachment you know I don't have you know spread out kind of like anything it's just kind of in here you know I've been living more deliberately and kind of only keeping the things that add value in my life when I was in an apartment um, so I kind of downsize and downsize and downsize to where the idea of living in a van wasn't like a crazy thing in terms of objects um, 
if anything, it was just like, you know, you can't have two bikes, you get one bike. You know, you can't, but those things do add a tremendous amount of value. Now, what I found interesting was the couches, the bookshelves, the stove with the toaster oven and the, all these other things still added value in my life, but you're not defined by a painting or a couch. I can sit on the ground, I can sit here, I lay in the bed. And so it's made in that sense as well, everything a little bit more deliberate. Um, because you're less distracted. If you're in a room with a thousand things, then your mind's kind of all over the place or it's easier to go there versus if you're in a white room with one book. It's either you alone in your thoughts or you with a book. Yeah, minimalism is um, certainly a big part of it, I suppose. I never really thought of it like that. But yeah, I guess it kind of comes hand in hand, you know? I certainly don't see this as a means to an end of like, oh, I'm gonna be a van lifer forever. But I do see the beauty in, in one, having it a project that you build up yourself because every micro detail is one that you thought of or if you're doing it with friends and partners or whatever but it's typically like you build it to spec right and then that on its own is a journey and a lesson and getting out and seeing what adds value like how do you like the van life what would you change what would you um but i think i'll always somewhat live in a van whether it's like just a camper or a weekend warrior thing um i don't know if i'll live in a van forever but i have been really really contemplating buying like a furniture trailer and converting it. My friend's converting an old Airstream right now and it's pretty gigantic, it's pretty cool to see. Um, but like converting a trailer, building a tiny home on a trailer or something of that sort I think is the next step for me. I certainly don't see myself paying someone to live anywhere anymore. I just, I can't really fathom, uh, yeah. I'm a hard worker and I enjoy working but I don't like working to not have an investment or to work so that I can just be, you know, at least if you're putting your money towards something, even if it's expensive, you'll get something back out of it, you know, because that time is very precious, you know. Yeah, I'd, I'd, I'd honestly say if, if there's anything you feel like you want to be doing that you're not doing and you're having either a hard time getting there or trying, of course, nothing happens overnight, but like the tiny things matter. So if you want to be healthier, drink an extra glass a day of water, you don't have to become vegan overnight or you don't have to build the van overnight or you don't have to move out of your partner apartment and be nomadic overnight but every choice you make every dollar you spend every thought you have is voting towards something and so you know every time you eat something you're either curing a disease or you're causing it and every time that you're spending your money on anything at all you're either voting towards that van you want the house you want the trip you want or you're like going against it and so yeah that's um I think a big one is just kind of do what adds value to your life and like be mindful of that, you know, because it's a beautiful world and it's so abundant and if you give it the chance to like, if you open up your heart to it, it's very abundant. I think that's what this journey, because it, you know, traveling from the east coast of Canada through the states out to here, which is the, you know, furthest northern point of the country I've ever been to. You meet so many incredible people and I've had so many life-changing experiences and, and a lot of those were simply just testing myself and seeing that I could do it and so yeah, if, if I could, who stressed about a lot of things along the way could, then like anyone can, you know, so just align with that. Yeah, I don't have much social media, but if you want to check out uh, roadside.manor at Instagram, that's where you could find me doing like climbing stuff and slacklining things and posting goofy stories because those are temporary so you can make them real goofy um but i do travel a good chunk in my van so if anyone's ever interested in meeting up doing adventure stuff or asking questions like i'm totally open to that so yeah hey everyone hope you enjoyed that video i just wanted to let everybody know that i am doing an epic hitchhiking trip with the purpose of making a documentary about it from Victoria, where I am right now, to Alaska. It's about 3,000 kilometers each way, and I'm bringing people with me. I want to bring people with me that are creatives, YouTubers, Instagrammers, photographers, writers. And uh, we're going to all make our individual content, and we're going to work together on the documentary as well as some film series and just constant collaboration. So there's already a couple people coming with me. And um, to make this film, I really want to upgrade some equipment. Uh, the, the trip itself is going to cost nothing. I've hitchhiked um, for a month and a half and it cost me 250 bucks. Um, so the trip itself costs nothing, but I need to upgrade my equipment to make this a uh, real documentary. So to do so, I've created a crowdfunding campaign on Indiegogo. Links in the description for that. 
Uh, there's some really, really cool perks that you can get and you can be a part of this movie just remotely even um, just through the perks and uh, through a lot of the prizes that you get on there for becoming a backer. Um, I'd love to see you on that exclusive community on Indiegogo. It's also on Patreon if that's a way that you'd rather back the movie. Uh, but let's make this happen. I'm ex super excited for this next project and stay tuned to this channel for more updates about it as well as the weekly alternative living documentaries.